Hey there, Luke Radke here, Mike Fangs, Period 2 Heavy Equipment Tech class, doing the Be the Fuel, Be the Fuel video assignment. Now, this is a, I will be talking about the port and helix pump, but first, I'm going to go over a basic fuel system, talk about some pressures and the way the fuel flows and whatnot. Now, the diagram you have in front of you is from a marine fuel system, so some of the stuff doesn't really apply to on-road vehicles or construction vehicles. So I'll just be pointing out the main, the main parts. So the fuel starts at the fuel tank. From there, it goes through, it gets sucked through the primary filter, which also contains a water separator. Water is heavier than fuel, so the water will sink to the bottom in an effort to only have pure diesel fuel going through the line. It gets sucked through that fuel filter via the transfer pump right here, or it's also known as a lift pump. And the lift pump then pushes the fuel through a secondary filter. Now I should mention that this primary filter filters out particles up to, or down to 25 microns in size. The secondary filter will filter particles and whatnot down to five microns on in size. This is because the mechanical fuel pump has very tight clearances of one to three microns. And so if any water, let's say, or debris or whatnot goes through there, it's just gonna strip away all lubrication and just rip the thing apart. So as I was getting back to the lift pump, it pushes the fuel through the secondary filter at approximately 25 to 30 PSI where it then goes to the fuel inlet of the mechanical fuel pump, or injection pump. The inj injection pump, the port and helix specifically, will pressurize the fuel in its barrels and inject the fuel out through equal length, heavy walled, seamless sta steel tubing to the injectors. If it's multi-hole injectors, it, the fuel will spray out at about 2,500 to 5,000 PSI. If it's just a pintle injector, it sprays out about 1,400 to 25 PSI. Pintle injectors just have the one stream that doesn't need to atomize as, as well because it's usually sprayed into pre-combustion chambers where the glow plugs will heat it up and aid in combustion. Anyway. The fuel that doesn't go through the injectors will flow through a return line back to tank. Now the fuel flowing through the, the injector pump is at that transfer pressure of approximately 25 to 30 PSI, but as it goes back to tank, it doesn't travel that fast. There's a restriction that it has to pass through, and that will reduce the pressure to approximately around 3 PSI, 2 to 4, 3 PSI where it returns to tank. Now, talking about the port and helix pump, this is a diagram of port and helix pump. So you've got your fuel inlet, your fuel outlet is over here, it doesn't really matter which side it goes into. Um, the ports that you see in the barrels are spill fill ports and each one works either way the fuel gets pushed up so it doesn't really matter so it enters this chamber right here the transfer chamber and from there the plunger there's a barrel and plunger the plunger will go down and depending on how much fuel is needed which is controlled by this fuel rack will determine the direction of the helix and will either suck in a bunch of fuel or not as much fuel and it will pressurize it as it thrusts it up through the um, through the delivery valve and this is where that equal length heavy walled seamless steel tubing would be it would come out there and go to its respective injector for its respective cylinder Now, this is all fine and good, but the question is, how is the amount of fuel controlled? We have 
attached to the um, to the port and helix pump right here is the governor area. The governor contains weights, which is weights on one side that spin around. And then there's also a spring over here that kind of constantly pushes against the weights. The two of them combined will control the control rod, which controls the amount of fuel going in. A better diagram of a mechanical governor is right here in the book. This is module 203E, page 47. So, as you can see, here's the, here's the governor weights I was talking about. And here's the spring that it reacts. And down here is a control lever where it controls the barrel or the, the plunger angle of the, the port and helix plungers. And that will depend on the angle of the helix is right here. Changes about that. Now, we'll just go through an example. If the engine slows down, these, these weights spin at um, engine speeds. And so if the engine slows down, that means RPM slows down. The weights will close in together and create less force against the spring. Now the spring will extend, it'll finally have a chance, it'll push out against the weights, moving this lever, which will move the control rack, turning the plunger, and what that does is the spring is constantly trying to feed more and more fuel into, into the injection pump, and so it'll start putting a lot of fuel into the injection pump, which more fuel is going into the cylinders. We know that in diesel systems, in order for the engine to speed up, you dump more fuel. So the more fuel will cause the engine to spin faster, increasing RPM, which will cause these weights to start, start spinning faster, and they will go out a bit more, creating more force against the governor spring and it will, the weights will continue to force the spring back until they are exerting equal pressure on each other in which the idle speed will stabilize. So, that is the gist of fuel systems, a uh, basic fuel system, and the port and helix pump, and its mechanical governor attached to it. So once again, here's the governor. You can see the weights pressing on the spring constantly fighting over control of the control rack, which adjusts the angle of the helix. Here is a diagram of the pump. So again, here's the governor with the weights. The spring is located back there. Here's the, the pin it's working on, the control sleeve, which controls the angle of the helix on the plunger, which will inject fuel. And, as, and once again, here is the basic fuel system. This is a marine one. You've got your shutoff valves and whatnot that most come with. This resembles the throttle lever, which controls the governor and spring force. But yes, you've got the basic fuel flow from the tank through the filters to the injection pump, where it's injected into the injectors at the respective PSI, given the type of injector it is, and the fuel that's not injected there returns back to the pump. It's again Luke Radke, Mike Mallory's Purity 2 Heavy Equipment Tech class, and this was the January intake. Thank you.